स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Let's talk about semi-direct products. So, suppose you have a group uh, G, and it has a normal subgroup N. and another subgroup k uh, with the following uh, property that every element of g can be expressed uniquely as g equals n times k for some n in n and k in k this is exactly the situation that we had in the dihedral group so in that case g was the dihedral group dn uh, it had a normal subgroup of rotations which was isomorphic to z mod nz and then there was this group K of order 2, which consisted of uh, the identity element and one reflection, which we called S. Okay, so then what you can do is, you look at the elements of the form K, N, K inverse. For any N in N and K in K. Now, because capital N is a normal subgroup of G, this thing belongs to N. Okay, so let's write this is some other element N prime, right? Let's write K dot N for k and k inverse then this is an action of k on n it's an action of k on the set n but it's not just an action on the set it is also an action such that k dot n1 n2 well what is that that is k n1 n2 k inverse but we can write that as k n1 k inverse k n2 k inverse just because this k inverse cancels off with this k so this is k dot n1 times k dot n2 okay so these are the features that we get when we have a group uh, and a normal subgroup and this kind of unique factorization of elements okay so the group structure so now we know that the elements of g can be written as um, n times k can we write down the group structure on G in terms of the group structure on N, the group structure on K, and this action of K on N? So the group structure, group operation in G, how does it look in terms of this data? So if you look at N1, K1, I have an element N1, K1, and another element n2 k2 what 
what I want to do is I want to try to express this product in terms of the group structures of n and k and of the group action of k on n. But see we can write this as um, n1 k1 n2 k1 inverse and then we can write k1 k2. Now here that's just because this um, k1 inverse k1 this cancels out so this have nearly not changed anything here. Of course I'm using associativity all the time. Now look at this. This element k1 n2 k1 inverse what is that? That's n1 times k1 dot n2 times k1 k2. So now this is an element of n this is an element of k. So we have expressed uh, a product of two elements written in the form n, n1 n times k again in the form n times k. Now what we can do is we can turn these observations around to uh, give a new way of constructing groups and these are called abstract semi-direct products. So in this, let's just start with, now we don't have a group G to start with, what we have is two groups N and K groups. Okay, what's more, we have an action of K on N. And this action satisfies the condition that k dot n1 n2 is k dot n1 times k dot n2. In other words, this action uh, preserves the group structure of n. So it just doesn't, doesn't just act on n as a set, but acts on n as a group. Now define a group. G equals n semi direct product k. This is called the abstract semi direct product of n and k by setting as a set G is um, just the Cartesian product of n and k. And group law given by n1 k1 multiplied by n2 k2 is equal to n1 times k1 dot n2 and k1 k2. then it is easy to check that this group law makes G a group. So you can easily check associativity, identity and inverse. Let us uh, look at the dihedral group example. We can turn it again on its backwards and we can say start with n equals z mod n z k equals z mod 2 z which I will write as identity I will write it as 1 comma s. So this 1 is the identity of z mod 2 z usually we write it as 0 in additive notation uh, well, let us call it identity comma s. Okay, and this s is the non-trivial element of z mod 2z and then define the action of k on n given by 
s dot i is n minus i for all i in z mod n z okay and of course uh, identity dot i is just i that's part of being a group action then dn is isomorphic to the abstract semi direct product n semi direct product k so this you know we don't get anything new we get back the dihedral group that we looked at earlier but you can just tweak this a little bit to get new and interesting groups so let's look at a new example if instead of z mod nz we start with um n equals z the group of integers k equals as before z mod 2z which i'll think of as identity comma s and i write s dot i to be minus i for all i in z then you can construct another group which we'll call the infinite dihedral group the infinite dihedral group is defined to be z semi direct product z mod 2z okay just by analogy this z is like you know z mod nz as n goes to infinity just you know in some informal sense and so this is called the infinite dihedral group and this group has another interesting uh, uh it arises in another interesting way uh consider the graph l graph with vertex set z and um, edges of the form i comma i plus 1 for each i in z so visually this is just the graph whose vertices are integers 0 1 2 3 dot 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 and minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 dot 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 and we join adjacent integers by edges and um, i'll um, let you think about this d infinity is isomorphic to automorphism group of this graph l so i give you a hint here um z acts by translations and s is the homomorphism which takes the vertex i to minus i we look at this in more detail in the exercises